It's pretty wet out here on the homestead today. We got three inches of rain in the last three or four days, so we can't really get out in the garden and do a whole lot. But I figured this was a good time to do kind of a garden update, a garden walk around, show you what we've got going on in all 10 of our plots and kind of what are our plans going forward into early spring. If this is your first time on our channel, welcome. So glad you found us. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button below and that bell button down below so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you are a frequent viewer of our channel, it's always good to have you back. So we'll start off in our dream garden here where we have our six 30 by 35 plots. But before we get there, I wanted to show you these blackberries we planted on a previous video. And some of these guys are actually starting to produce some buds. And we've got some leaves forming there, which is always a good sign. So looks like those plants took well. And plot number one of this tour here in the dream garden, we've got some purple cauliflower there we've been harvesting. It's almost done. This little blank spot here where we had our rutabagas. We've got some blue night kale. And this stuff needs to be harvested again. It's growing nice. We've got red cabbage and we've still got a good bit of our green cheers cabbage now like i said i've already cut a good bit of this purple cauliflower in here i've got a few more heads there's one right there that needs to be harvested so this purple cauliflower did really good for us uh, we didn't have any freezing temperatures so we didn't have to worry about any of it getting ruined by the frost and um, almost all the plants made a really nice head. We had a few plants that made some kind of scraggly looking heads like that right there, which is gonna happen from time to time. But for the most part, a really nice harvest on this graffiti cauliflower. And then here where we had our rutabagas, I need to get in here and clean this up so I can be ready to plant something else. So what I'll do is I'll take those drip tape lines you see right there, I'll grab them at the end. I'll pull them back this way on this side of the main line and we'll hoe that area kind of rake out any of that weed debris and uh, put that tape back down and we'll be ready to plant something else. We've been harvesting some of these red cabbages and eating them. Really pleased with how these guys did. We've got some really nice ones there. There's a pretty big one. There's a pretty big one and there's a nice one there. All these are you know probably about five pounds. We've got a few smaller ones which is nice too sometimes you can't eat a big head of cabbage at one time so it's good to have a few different sizes in there but this rio grand variety did really well for us this fall slash winter and then our cheers cabbage here this green cabbage this is the best crop of cabbage i have ever grown in the past i haven't done a really good job with cabbage but you got to feed it these things are heavy feeders and we kept these fed and we've got some real nice heads there you know, that one's probably six or seven pounds. So is that one there. And uh, these things are holding pretty well. So we're able to come in and just harvest them as we need them. We don't have to get them all at one time. They haven't been splitting, even with all the rain we've been having and some high 70, 80 degree days. So really happy with how this variety is holding here in the field. And it's extended our harvest window and allowed us to just get them as we need them instead of getting them all at one time. And then plot number two is where we had our snow bowl cauliflower, green magic broccoli. We've got lacinato kale and tiger collards on the end there. So you can't tell now, but we had a really good crop of snow bowl cauliflower and green magic broccoli. I got all that white cauliflower harvested, got it in the fridge. It'll keep pretty good in there a couple weeks in our bags. And what I did was I came in here and I took my loppers and I just cut them plants right at soil level. Because I don't have anything in the greenhouse ready to go in this spot right now, I figured I'd just let that plant debris kind of provide some ground cover. You know, that way I don't have a weed problem there. Just kind of cover that area, let it decompose and those stalks will decompose as well. That way we can just yank our drip tape up, clean it up and plant something else when we get ready. Now our broccoli here had a really good crop, some nice big heads. We got a lot of side shoots on this 
and some of them I just weren't able to get to in time like this one right here you can see got all seedy on me so we were busy harvesting a lot of other things and I had a few of these side shoots that I just didn't have time to get in here and harvest before they got too big and seedy like these right here but that's okay we we got a really good harvest off the main heads and uh, we just chopped and dropped those broccoli plants as well and then our lacinato kale here is looking real good in addition to our tiger collards both of these really need harvesting in the next day or so like i said we've been busy harvesting and eating a lot of cauliflower and cabbage and um, just have kind of put the kale and collards on hold for a little bit but i need to get in here and pick these things so they'll keep growing also probably need to get in here and do a little weeding in between my plants uh, between my rows doesn't look too bad but some in row weeding i need to get in there and do once i harvest these guys in the next few days or so and um, these things will keep growing and growing and growing you know on up to when it gets really hot so we'll just keep harvesting these keep plucking those bottom leaves and keep getting production out of them these two varieties or two crops the lacinato and the tiger collard or what I consider two of the most productive crops you can grow, whether it be a small scale market garden or just a backyard garden. Plot number three here is where we have a cover crop of winter rye planted. We did that in one of our previous videos and this stuff come up pretty good, uh, especially considering we had some really heavy rains right after we planted it and I was worried about some of the seed washing out, but it doesn't look like that was really an issue. We haven't got it where it's just completely carpeting the soil yet, but we're getting there. It's filling in really nice and uh, happy with how this is going. I might take my injector with the overhead sprinkler and put some fish emulsion on this plot here just to feed the soil, kind of get it nice and healthy. So when we do get ready to turn over this plot and plant it, We'll have some nice nutrients in there. Plot number four is where we planted all carrots back in October. Hey, tiger. And for some reason, three of those carrot rows I planted just didn't come up very well. They, they came up all right, but not near as well as these other rows. And I don't know why. I don't know if it was a temperature deal or what. It wasn't variety specific because I planted lots of different varieties in here. But anyways, we always have a backup plan. And so we came in here where the carrots didn't germinate real well and wheel hoed that area and came back in here and transplanted some beets. We have some Kyogia beets, which are the red and white striped beets. We have some Merlin beets in there. And then over on this end, we have some touchstone gold beets that are looking really good. And so that way we didn't have any wasted space in this plot. We always kind of like to have a backup plan just in case something doesn't come up well. Our carrots are looking really good. Really happy with the way the carrots are looking. Folks, this is why we plant them on double rows like this because you can see that foliage just kind of covers that middle space there. Really helps with any weed pressure we might have. And uh, you just get a really nice stand of carrots that way when you plant them in a band like that on double rows. So let's pull up a couple of these carrots and see how they're looking. We can sacrifice a couple for the sake of video here. Let's see if I can grab one there or two. So this is the Viper variety, which makes a long slender carrot. And you see they've got a ways to go, but they're getting there. And um, these are really nice for cutting into pieces, making baby carrots. You can freeze them and uh, save them for making roasts and stuff like that. So that Viper variety, first year I've grown it, um, but really happy with it so far. Tops look really healthy and looks like we're going to have some decent sized carrots. Plot number five here is where we had 10 rows of jambalaya okra back in the summer and into the early fall. And we got that okra out of there, got it cleaned up. And some of these plants in here were just extra transplants we had. 
we grew a bunch to do some product pictures and stuff like that and dad didn't have any room for them so i said heck i'll just throw them in here you can see there that puddle how wet it is around here these first four rows in this plot are green magic broccoli and these plants just aren't going to get as big as that broccoli that i grew way over there for a couple reasons these plants were pretty stressed when i put them in the ground they were kind of had overgrown their seed trays and kind of been neglected like i said i just put them here instead of throwing them away so they were stressed early and you can tell they're not going to get very big some of them are already making little broccoli heads there we'll get some kind of harvest off these but not not a massive harvest like we got on our other broccoli another reason is fertility on one of my plots we'll talk about that one over there in a minute i put too much of my chicken manure compost down and it caused me some problems so i got a little gun shy here and i probably didn't get enough fertilizer on these guys another reason why they're not going to get quite as big you can see a little head forming right there we'll get something out of it it was you know we didn't have any plans for this plot anyway so might as well grow a little bit of broccoli here. Then we've got two double rows of purple kohlrabi here, and this stuff's looking pretty good. Some of it is starting to form a bulb already. You can see that guy right there. Got a little golf ball sized bulb on it. So these things are holding in there pretty good. I don't know if they'll reach maximal size because they were a little stressed when we planted them like the broccoli, but we'll see. They're looking pretty good so far. And, um, Hopefully we can dry out a little bit so these things don't start cracking. And then these last four rows here, we've got all rutabagas that I transplanted from some 338 cell trays. I was testing those trays before we put them on the site and these guys did really good being planted from those tiny transplants. Now I grew some pretty decent rutabagas over that way earlier this year. I got about close to softball size on my roots and you can see let's see if we can find one here these guys are starting to make some roots there but on those other ones i came in and i harvested the greens regularly and i don't know if that stressed the plant and maybe that's why the rutabagas didn't get quite as big as they could have so here we're going to do a little experiment these first two rows here i'm going to pick the greens on these just like i did the others because those greens are really good to eat on these last two rows i'm not going to touch them i'm going to let the greens just sprawl and get as big as they can and i'm going to see if that makes a difference with the size of the rutabaga roots and if you've done this experiment before or you tested this let me know in the comments below what you think is going to happen here does plucking the leaves or harvesting and eating the leaves affect the end result the insides of the rutabaga root or does it not matter and then our last plot in the dream garden here is kind of just a hodgepodge plot some of the stuff in here is done well some of it not so well we got some hot spots in here probably gonna have to come in here and put a heavy layer of compost maybe some mushroom compost if i can find some on this just to get the tilth better and get it draining a little better. So we had some kohlrabi right here, we harvested, and then I left all that plant debris there and kind of tilled it in just because I need to build the organic matter in this plot. Here's some Savoy King cabbage, and it's doing pretty well. It's starting to head up a little bit. So happy with how that looks for the most part. Here's one of those hot spots right here. You can see those few plants just, aren't doing anything but when we get down to the end of the row they look fine so we just got a little hot spot here we need to work on more kohlrabi we had right here we tilled in that plant debris here's some red bull brussels sprouts so these are red brussels sprouts and the plants are looking dang good however <clears throat> brussels sprouts need some really cold weather to kind of trigger that sprout production and i just don't know if we're going to get it this year maybe we will hopefully we will and uh, we can get some sprouts on those stalks right there. And then right over here is some Jade Cross Brussels sprouts. And these guys are looking decent, but just as with the red Brussels sprouts, 
just hasn't been cold enough to really trigger a whole lot of sprout production. There's a little bit in there. Um, Brussels sprouts are tough to grow down here in the south, but we always like to give it a try. Some years it happens, some years it doesn't, but when it does happen, it's worth all those years where you failed. Then we've got some more collards here that we planted a month or so after those other collards we saw in a previous plot. These here have a little hot spot in the middle of the row again. We'll just have to kind of work our way through that. This blank area here is where I had some beets. I tilled in that plant debris just to kind of help build the organic matter. Probably still gonna have to add some compost there as this spot just doesn't drain well. These collards over here are looking dang good and they need to be picked. And then over here, we've got something I didn't do until this year, never grown cool flowers before. And man, really, really been happy with how these things have turned out, how they look. And uh, I'll definitely be growing more of these in the future. So this is our Calendula Prince mix also known as a Scottish Marigold. And you get a little bit of variation of orange and yellow color there. And I've been coming in here about once every week or two and clipping the heads on these so they don't reseed, just kind of deadheading them. And I throw all the heads right out there in the grass. You can see them. But these things just keep blooming and keep blooming. And I don't know what kind of cold temperatures will kill them, but we haven't had them yet. I think we're supposed to hit 25 in the next week or two. We'll see if that kills them or not. But these things, in addition to being pretty and giving you some nice ground cover, also have some natural pest deterrent properties. And I'll show you how effective that's been. So these collards here are planted probably too close to these marigolds, but they're planted really close to them. I haven't sprayed these collards a single time. And you can look and look and look and you won't find any, any bug bites or holes in the leaves or anything. Haven't had any pressure on these collards here and I think has a lot to do with these marigolds here. So if you do have a lot of bug pressure in your cool weather garden, I would highly recommend interplanting some of this calendula right here because from my experiences, does a great job at naturally controlling your pest pressure. All right, all right, all right. So that's what's going on in our six dream garden plots. Now let's walk over to our other four more established plots, the ones we've been growing in longer, and see what's happening over there. And plot number seven behind me here is our big allium plot. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on that. We just talked about that on two videos last week where we showed how we set up our injector and we fertilize that with ammonium sulfate. So you can go check those videos out. But well, we've got onions, leeks, shallots, and garlic all growing well in that plot. And then plot number eight here is where we've got English peas, some watermelon radishes, and our lettuce back there. Now this is the Mr. Big variety of English peas. And I've got these on my Hortanova trellis netting, which is doing a good job of holding up these plants so far. I've really, really enjoyed using this trellis netting on cucumbers, pole beans, English peas. Just so much easier to set up and take down than those big old cattle panels. And these things have been kind of slow to grow. I don't know if it's because of the seesaw hot and cold, hot and cold weather we've been having. But they started blooming in the last few weeks. You can see all the blooms on there. And we've got some pods forming here. Nice big pod there that's starting to fill out. And we've got some really cold or cold for down here weather coming. It's supposed to get 25 next week. And I don't want to lose these guys because I've been kind of babying them. So I'm going to have to rig me some type of tunnel structure with some white plastic to cover them up. And if I'm able to do that successfully, I'll definitely show you how I did it. Right behind those English peas, we've got some watermelon radishes growing here, and I'll probably extend that tunnel to cover these guys as well, because they're getting almost there, and I don't want to lose them to a hard freeze. Let's take a look and see if we can pull one up. So they're not, you know, tennis ball size like we like to harvest them, but they're getting there. Some nice looking watermelon radishes there. 
Then we've got all of our lettuce rows here. We've got our Cherokee lettuce, just starting to form some heads. It's handling the heat well. I was kind of worried with some of these high 70 days we've been having if this stuff was gonna bolt or not. But uh, it's been holding pretty good, which is, is good. The, the cooler front coming in will be welcomed. So these things will, will kind of just be on pause and we can extend our harvest window and just get them as we need them. This row here is mostly, I got a rogue plant there and there, mostly romaine and I've harvested probably two thirds of this row and uh, still got a little bit to go. It's starting to form some heads as you can see there. We've got our Skyfos butterhead, lettuce forming heads. This Tehama lettuce is just looking absolutely beautiful. That needs to be harvested soon. Our Harmony butterhead is starting to kind of wrap up and form heads. And then right over there, we've got another row of watermelon radishes, which aren't quite as big as the other row because they're a little bit shaded with those pine trees there. But they're looking okay. The frost might get those, and if they do, it's okay. That other row is probably more promising anyway. Plot number nine here is where we got our greens beds. We showed you how we planted these with the Hoss Garden Cedar on a previous video. We've also got some beets in here. So these touchstone gold beets, some of these are starting to form little beet roots there. You can see down in there, small beets. These are growing pretty good. They'll get stunted a little bit from a hard frost, but as long as we keep the ground wet, they'll be good. This is our Savannah mustard. So we cut this about a week and a half ago, and as you can see, it grows back super, super fast. And uh, it'll probably be ready to cut again in the next few days or so. We walk over here past our little harvesting lane. We've got our arugula. I cut a little bit of this just to make me a little salad, but I need to get in here and um, cut this whole row clean. This stuff is ready to be harvested. We've got more beets over here. So these are kestrel beets. You can see they're starting to form little beet roots. And then our tot soy, we've just harvested almost this entire row. That's what we've cut. And then down here is what we still have to cut. And some of this is bolting, which is crazy. That, that shows you how unseasonably warm it's been down here when you get greens bolting in early December. But most of it's holding pretty good. Those that do bolt like that, I'll just reach down in here and uh, and just pull that plant out of there. Because if you cut it, it's just gonna grow back more flowers. So those few that do bolt, I just pull them out of there, cut the rest of them and they'll be fine. And then lastly, plot number 10, this long skinny plot right here is where we've got our cover crop cocktail of daikon radishes, hairy vetch, and peas. And we did a little update video on this a while back. And I talked about how I may have planted the radishes a little too thick. They're not gonna get quite as big as they normally would get. We can see the radishes in there and let's reach in here and grab one. You can see there, they're not gonna get as big as they normally would if I would have spaced them out a little more, but we've got some dense ground cover there and it actually worked out pretty good. We had a light frost, which will burn back the radishes a little bit. And you can see some of the yellowing on the leaves where that happened. And that actually allowed the vetch and the peas to really start thriving and coming up through their well. You can see there's a pea plant there and then all that vetch right there so really happy with how this turned out even though i might have put too many radish seed in my cocktail the the kind of succession of the frost knocking back the radish and the rest of the stuff thriving has worked out well for us and we got some dense dense ground cover here this should be an awesome awesome plot to plant potatoes in in february and then on a future upcoming video in the next few weeks what we'll do we'll come in here with our push mower with the mulching kit on it. And hopefully we can get in here 
and chop and drop all this vegetation. And then once we do that, we'll incorporate that into the soil and get this plot nice and ready to plant some potatoes in mid-February. All right, so that's what's going on in all 10 of our garden subplots. Now, I know that looks like a lot of garden to maintain, but if you sum it all up, it's really only about 12,000 square feet or about a quarter of an acre. And as far as the time it takes to maintain a garden like this, I really only spend about 30 minutes to an hour in the afternoons here. On the weekends, I'll spend, you know, three to four hours on Saturday, three to four hours on Sunday, but it doesn't take as much time as you would think to maintain a garden of this size. It all has to do with using the right tools and techniques to make things easier for you. So using things like drip irrigation is gonna make things a lot easier for us because it's gonna reduce our weed pressure and we're not gonna to have to get in there and cultivate or weed near as often as we would if we were overhead watering. Also, things like cover cropping and tarping when we're not growing vegetables on a plot is gonna go a long way to reducing that long-term weed pressure and just make things easier for us when we're growing vegetables in a plot. And we're not gonna have to put as much effort into getting some nice vegetable harvests as we would if we weren't doing those things. So if you've got any questions about any of the plots or any of the crops we talked about, put those in the comments below and I'll be glad to answer them for you. Also, if you've got any suggestions, any things you think I could do better, put those in the comments as well. I'm always looking for ways to improve my vegetable gardening here on the homestead. I'll put a link below to our garden seeds page so you can check out any of the varieties that you saw in this video today. If you enjoyed this video, give me a big like, give me a big thumbs up and a big share, and we will see you guys next time.